G'day, today I'm going to be playing a little bit more Flycorp. I'm still waiting for the, the new version of Unlock All Countries to come in, but in the meantime what we're going to do is just jump into free play uh, and have a look. Now obviously this, this will be a bit easier, but what I think will be fun about this is just getting a chance to see the whole world sort of unlocked. Um, sort of cope with the idea that you're only going to be able to travel one way and then see what we can do uh, in terms of a, an overlying strategy that if we do get into All Countries mode and it is winnable, that we actually can have a strategy in mind on how we're going to play it. Now, from last time, Germany really became the center of our, our sort of world, and I don't think that that should be the case. It's close. I think France should be. I mean, if you literally look at the layout of this map, potentially it's France. I mean, potentially you could say it's somewhere like Chad or the Sudan, but there isn't going to be a major city in there. What we probably want to do is centralize, <clears throat> excuse me, one major city, which I think is going to be Paris. I think if we can have Paris and then you could even have flights to the the other major countries in here, I think that that would be a really sort of neat way to go. So we're going to start off by just going Paris and um, someone, someone described it as a spoken wheel strategy of having just those go to one place. Now, one of the, the things that has been said in the comments of um, the videos that I have made and, and the different strategies was particularly on the way that I did the planes. The way that I was doing it was I was immediately making two more planes if there were three planes on any any route. And a lot of people said, that's not the way that I do it. I generally would do one plane and upgrade at once, the speed difference and the, the carry difference. Now, I think that the correct answer is possibly gonna be halfway in between. I am gonna go two planes, but one of those two planes is upgraded because what that means is that, uh, no. That what that means is that we have um, two planes on that and they're actually operating at different speeds with different capacities. So even though it'd be nice and to sort of have two different lots going at two different rates, uh, sorry, two at the same rate to sort of like opposite ends to sort of give myself the minimum amount of thought required for any one of these to operate. Uh, I think the way to go will be two planes on, um, two planes going at different speeds. Now, if we do get longer tracks, that is going to potentially cause issues because they will um, they will get a little bit more sort of found out that potentially both will be at one end of the route when the other end is what needs the attention. But, uh, but we'll see how we go. So part of the rules of this mode is that we won't die if we overload a, a airport. But what I would like to do is strategically see if I can manage it. If I can do this without... Um, having any of my airports overload. It's at least the goal. Um, I realize that with how early on this is, it's going to be a lot of money to try and get three planes on each of these routes, but that's what we're going for. Ideally, a, a lot of the way that people seem to suggest that, that you do do this is reactionary, that it's if... Um, if a, if a lane, sorry, a line does start to sort of complain, that's when you address it and that's when you sort of do an upgrade and give them more things. But the sort of logic of what I'm attempting to do is to have, um, is not upgrade the airports. If I have to upgrade any of these airports, then it means that I have failed in correctly identifying how many planes that that line is going to need. Uh, courtesy of that businessman, I can now really get all of these upgraded and operating. Now something like this tiny little line here, it might seem a bit ridiculous to do. But I mean, courtesy of that, um, that generous businessman just then, I do have a lot of, a lot of money. So we're just gonna make a very efficient France before we move into the rest of the world. So with this line here, I think we'll just give him just a level two plane. We won't worry about making that any more significant than that. So you can see, say, Leon right here, both those planes are at the same end of the line at the moment, which is why it's starting to struggle a little bit more. All right, let's get all lanes. Actually, no, let's just upgrade that one guy. It's a short route. Okay, so I think ideally, the United States would be our second unlock here, possibly. It would give us long routes and it would give us another country that has a lot of domestic connections. Having that in the, um, especially when it comes to all countries, when things are still cheap, I think that that would be a really 
uh, nice strategy to try and, and have that uh, logistically, if you can have all of the domestic flights of America, of Russia, of China, potentially of India and Brazil, then you can, you can imagine that you can make a lot of money on those flights and the long distance flights that you're also going to have happening um, could end up being very beneficial. So we will definitely try and save some money here. We can see that if we try and get to Washington, it's going to cost us 2000 It's going to cost us 8000 to unlock the US. So our current goal will be, can we get 3000 at least to get that going? And we won't buy any more uh, planes for these new routes until uh, the expensive planes is done. I mean, obviously we're not work operating against that requirement of having to unlock another country every three minutes um and oh, sorry six minutes and if that was the case just places like luxembourg and that would be probably our our go-to the fact that they are 800 is a pretty expensive venture off the bat here does mean that that i think you want to be more strategic about what your next country is so i would say it would either be germany or um or the united states Now, some people do question the logic of the way that I build um, these lines that wouldn't I be better off connecting, say, these four to here? Because if you want to go from Nice to Marseille, Marseille uh, the um, the way that that's going to, to sort of play out is that you're going to see, you're going to have to go all the way to Paris and come all the way back. So you're also, you're loading Paris and these two lines much more than you possibly would need to. Uh, the logic that I'm working with is that you don't have to upgrade these two stations, these two sort of lines so much. The idea is that Paris is going to take the hit of all of the traffic going to it. And because of that, if if any, if you sort of start to connect everything, if say I connected these three and then I connected Madrid somewhere down here, then those lines are going to possibly end up getting travel from Eastern Europe through to get to Spain. And that's where you're potentially going to have to start upgrading all of your different lines. And that's what I'm trying to avoid, that it is basically Paris is what needs the major focus. Some of these other lines might eventually need um, some focus as well. But for now, let's just try and minimalize the the sort of the arteries of of our routes. And so that's why it is just Paris really that uh, that we are gunning for here. There are certainly some lines in here that are only operating with one plane now. I just don't remember which ones. But hopefully Paris isn't doing too bad with this guy. Seems like he's operating all right. There's no no sort of overflow. So we're all good. Let's get this guy connected. We'll give him that second plane. And now let's get the United States going. So we want to spare no expense on this connection. And that must have been a pretty serious problem since no one's even flown to Washington yet. Yeah, let's hire some lawyers. Okay, so. What we want to do is get a variety of, of planes flying at a variety of speeds. Ideally, we want these going as fast as possible as well. We want to upgrade these planes to to the high end because that is a long commute. And we don't want Washington starting to buckle under the, the pressure of, of what's going to come. So all of this 1800 that we have will certainly be currently dedicated to, to this route and hopefully Everything going on in France is currently, currently happy. Let's just keep upgrading this one guy. Try and get him. Even if we've just got the one that's doing going absolutely health level of speed. Um, it's probably going to be the way to go. You can imagine the poor 20 passengers that are currently sitting on a plane like this. Watching it go by. But we are also going to have to address America as they come in. Um, now America definitely is going to need multiple hub points here and I would say that it's going to be Washington, uh, Dallas and then uh, Los Angeles I would say is probably what we need yeah, we can see Paris is starting to get hit a bit more and I would imagine it's a lot of American travel so the, the fix for that will be to upgrade these planes some more and let's get another plane going as well. Yeah, let's do it. 
you can see that this guy isn't even full. Like he's he's zipped past everyone. He's cleaned it up, and he's now um he's now moving. But what we, I will try and do is still spoke everything just to Washington for now. Washington does need look like it needs a bit more support too. Um, not surprising. I mean, obviously these these sort of major routes are going to need major sort of uh, capacity at them. You can see how much money we are now making and. You can see that's that's pretty rocketed, and what that is is that because we are now flying uh, people from America to Europe, the amount of money that you get for a a plane making like a, a passenger making their trip successfully is based on how far they are traveling, I believe. So these these people that are coming from just even if it was just direct Washington to Paris, they're just making us absolute bank. Uh, so let's get. Make sure that we've got maximum amount of planes on there. Let's get him upgraded a bit more. We'll go him all the way to the max and we'll max out that guy as well. Just trying to make sure that they are a little bit spread out so you can see the distance from him to him is pretty good. Philly connected. Where did that hurricane touch down? Of course, if a hurricane touches down in either Washington or in, in Paris, you're going to be in trouble. I mean, the whole world would probably be in trouble if that happened. You can see that these guys at the back here are still struggling a little bit, but they aren't. I mean, these are only 50 population places. Oh, we need to just max out now. Our population at Paris. So I'm glad that it does give me that warning as opposed to say ending the game. It well, I mean, that was still my five seconds notice really. But uh, I think that that's really a fun way to sort of, to learn this this style. And you can see my money as well is just now blown up. That's that's huge. And these poor, poor guys on this 20 plane. The only problem is it doesn't actually tell me where Like what what one is overloading? Is it Paris? Or is it just one of the small ones? It does make it tricky. Now Houston I don't know yet, because I would like I mean Houston might just end up getting to be the the middle hub. Or possibly if I get something like what would be here, Kansas City, St. Louis, Oklahoma City. What I'll do is I'll upgrade the planes for Marcel, just because it seems to be struggling with the distance. I'll go for those guys as well. You can see Paris and... Um, there we go, so there's our Dallas airport. And we'll connect that to Washington, and we'll make this a bit more of a significant LA. Okay. Cargo. So well, let's bolster our uh, planes to Chicago and we will make them bigger. We'll make Dallas bigger as well. And let's up Houston as well. Okay, so. Washington is still starting to struggle a little bit. Oh, we've got Atlanta planning. I mean, that is also a major city. Doing, I had missed on getting there more than one on flight. Uh, we'll send these guys to. Well, we'll send them to Washington since it's a bit more of the key location on this this point. If they were flying to Dallas, they would have to then get through to there anyway. Nice is almost full. Let's slow it down a little bit because we are starting to. It's definitely not a money problem we currently have. It's just a awareness problem, I guess. So where's Nice down here? Let's upgrade one of their planes. 
give him another boost. And let's go buy... What do we think? China? Go straight to Beijing from here. What do we make India our central hub? Make it this way. I think India. Let's grab Paris. Let's get that guy going. And then again, let's five planes. Get the first one off and flying. And then what we'll do is we'll um just pick the other guys and we'll just give them variety of speeds just to just to divide them up along that line. But now. Indianapolis isn't too happy. Upgrade one of their planes. Let's um, improve the connection to Dallas. Bye. We've got a bit more money to spend too, so we might just, especially those longer ones, we'll just double the normal upgrade that we were doing. And those penalties seem to just kick in the second that um, someone gets hits overflow. It's not to do with um, that sort of five second warning that the other one has, so it's not too bad. Just sort of. I don't know if I need to upgrade those two guys, it probably doesn't matter. New Delhi. Makes sense. Now there is an achievement to upgrade a um, an airport to the maximum level, which is something that I haven't yet done. So with the amount of money that this mode is generating, it does seem like I can nab that one pretty easy. Might give that a third plane too, just because it's a bit of a distance. So let's make it Paris, because this is going to be the central point of our um, network. I mean, that would be a big cost to do that last one, so we'll just hold it there for now. Alright, Calcutta. Get that going, and let's add a bit more of a plane base. Whichever I got that, it would flick me over there. And I realize down the bottom it's telling me which one it is, but... Uh, another comment that I got on a few videos of my last one that I, I thought I'd just mention just out of curiosity for those people that may have been screaming at their uh, computers and or phones uh, and not commented. This isn't a pause button. I think I, I did complain a few times to say there's no pause button while well, you can clearly see this sitting up here. That's a that's a menu button. So, uh, so don't worry, I haven't just missed a, a glaringly obvious pause button at the top. Now a lot of this positioning here of, of where say I'm just um, connecting this all the way up. I'd say this is more just a luxury of the absurd money that I'm getting here. Um, if this was all countries mode, it does seem like there's a, a much more sort of sustainable way of building this that that I can have. Um, I could retain more money if I was just sort of making little clusters uh, like say that there was a southern Indian point that would then connect through to that. Um, but I don't think here it's over overly going to matter. It seems like we're getting money as fast as we can spend it. So, let's um, try and keep this going. Let's get China in the mix. And we'll bounce that through Delhi for now. Let's double check what our route's looking like here. That guy upgraded.
I mean, I certainly do appreciate the uh, unlock all countries mode in that it's not just this much of a, sort of a cruise that you can just go through and just... Uh, you just got infinite money to, to connect as long as you like. I do like the, the actual challenge of having to um, sort of like uh, strategize about it. It's just obviously as it is unwinnable at the moment. I just need a little bit more of Tinker to make it a very enjoyable mode. It's Beijing that's been screaming at me up here. Taipei will connect through Shanghai. Oh, actually, now that we've got Zhao, uh, Gangzhou, sorry, what's um, that's so I'm gonna sell that route and we'll get Gangzhou to connect to Beijing and we'll get Gangzhou to connect to Delhi so that the domestic flights can still sort of just stay internal and then all internationals can can bounce out the same way. Now, one other thing I have thought about since my last set of videos about the way the map looks here. So Taiwan is obviously part of China in here. Uh, and then I think one of the other ones I pointed out is that Crimea isn't here. Um, I think that I think the, the new outlook that I'm having on that is that as opposed to it just being this map is flat wrong, I'm pretty certain that the developers of this game are Russian based. So it would say this it, more let this be a sort of an, an interesting perspective of this is how Russia, a Russian company is allowed to present the world. Um, it's potentially not their choice on how to present the world, but it's the, the world that they're allowed to present. Um, and I think in that in that sense, it's a little bit more empathetic to go like, well, it's it's nice to live in a country where I can debate whether something is or isn't a country, opposed to being stuck somewhere where, where that may not be the case. So, I mean, that may not be the case of what, what is happening and, and why, say, things like Crimea or Hong Kong generally don't appear on this map, uh, but I'll, uh, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and, and just sort of accept that it, this is what they're allowed to say. So, uh, it's their board, we're just playing it. Another interesting note about that, that I, I suspect that Hong Kong isn't on this map. Um, now, potentially in fairness, what they have done is they've, they've removed some places that are just too small to actually fit on this map. India is really starting to get a bit big here. How are we looking over here? Let's try and upgrade this. Those two. Um, one thing that I actually find quite uh, quite funny as an Australian. So I live I live all the way down here. Now, if I was to fly anywhere in the world, um, I would fly either, if I'm flying to say Europe, I would fly through uh, Qatar or through uh, the United Arab Emirates. That's sort of the, the marker point that you hit midway. Or if I'm heading obviously to the, US, the United States, we go across this way. But if you're heading to Asia or in anywhere in this sort of vicinity, there are two major hubs in Asia Pacific. One of them is Singapore, which doesn't exist. And one of them is Hong Kong, which courtesy of Shenzhen mean right there, probably also doesn't exist. So it means that for me as an Australian, the two most major airports on the map, uh, their cities don't exist, which is just quite funny as a uh, little predicament. Uh, and I think also that uh, Singapore is considered the nicest airport in the world as well. I'm not sure if you've ever watched any videos about the, the beautiful sort of waterfall that they've got in there or the um some huge slides that i think you can go you can climb up a few levels and then slide down several to, to occupy your time but it does seem like if you if you run out of things to do in singapore you can just go to the airport and occupy yourself for, for a long while okay so the next major spot on the map i think is brazil so what, what i'm sort of attempting to do here is just do the huge broad strokes of this is how you would lay out that's New York, I think I've got there. So let's zoom in a bit more. There we go. So we're now going Brazil to Washington. We'll get our five planes. We'll max out the first one. And then we'll just sequentially go down. Just to try and spread them out for now. 
and we will make that an airport of note as well. Now, these guys are still struggling. They, in fairness, they probably are going a bit of a longer route than other other places in the world. Would like that all countries mode sort of benefit of it asking me if I want to get rid of all level one planes. I want to stop making level one planes. All that sort of stuff would definitely be. Nice. I might connect Shanghai both ways here too. Let's get them. Um, what is actually Gangzhou's issue? So predominantly it's stuff heading out this way. So let's get some... Uh, if I only got the one plane on here? Yeah, that'd cause a problem. There we go. But now we've got a bit more spread. Now we'll just go one more for good measure and... Xi'an. Thank you to those as well that, that did give me our pronunciation on some of the places that I either did struggle with or had no idea on, on how to pronounce. Uh, it's certainly always an interesting thing to learn. It's quite funny that we are just sort of throwing mob money at any problem at this stage. It's just... Alright, so Florida is currently a hotspot of tension. Let's try and up the planes heading out there because that's a bit of a long route. Let's give Washington a bit more of a major base and we'll give Great Dallas as well. Still nothing any further this way. Okay, now with the money that we got, what we'll next do is bring in... South Africa. Get Cape Town connected to Brasilia. Keep an eye on him until he's a bit more spread. Let's give Chennai a bit more attention and uh, Mumbai as well. Johannesburg in the mix. Let's get let's throw money at these because it seems like it's a bit trickier in this mode to sort of be back where where attention needs to be given. At least nothing seems like it's sitting in red overly long. They just sort of flick red. I get hit with this um this complaint and then we are uh, we go back. So it's nothing that's sort of like horrifically bad. I say that as this guy probably over the edge. Nanjing. It's all good. All right. So then I think we do want something central. Who's going to be our biggest city in the country in the in the middle of the Africa? It's going to be Nigeria. Money. Let's just keep building our uh, our major infrastructure here. Okay, so we'll go one, two, three, four. Look 
let's go all out on this guy. So I imagine that a lot of these flights might just suddenly change their mind and decide that this is going to be the, uh, the ideal way to go. So we will give them a plane each that's spectacular. Alright, and I will give them... Um, New Delhi as well. Country, uh, cities that are just getting missed for a bit here. So somewhere like Hangzhou, should I just be connecting it to Shanghai? I don't know, I think... I think I do still want to keep just spoken wheeling everyone into the... Uh, into that, just the central sort of point, as few connections as possible. Okay. So, I mean, really the only remaining thing from here would then just be one last corner of the Earth, which would be down here. And whether that's Australia or Indonesia, I mean, Australia doesn't, wouldn't have too much more bouncing on beyond it. So potentially that it should just be Indonesia and Australia is, is just an, an extension of that. So we'll go Jakarta. Is our next connection? And we go. And then we can whoop, put them there. And Joe, so our other our other connection in. I don't need to go to Beijing. We will go from the central point too. All right, so let's just add a second uh, plane on each of these. Now, one of the, um, the the sort of two major things I think I'm attempting to achieve in this layout that I that I now currently have is oh, let's go Jaipur. Apologies. Is what what I'm sort of attempting to show, I guess, in this particular um, episode of of playing free for all is if you were to just have all the money in the world and you were allowed to do all countries mode, what would sort of like what would you try and do as a starting base? And I think this is sort of it. I think that these, the game isn't really going to be too um, clear in giving, well, it doesn't seem like it's something that the game's gonna give is, is what the sort of amount of people are that fly through any particular airport is. Um, so you've got to almost have a an, an idea or a coming in knowledge of which cities are gonna get busy. like. You have to know that Shanghai is, is a major city in China. I mean, well, a lot of these cities in China are going to be really big as the population is sort of spread pretty evenly over the country. Um, but, like, do you know what your your major cities are in India? It's it's It almost is like you've got to have that knowledge coming in in, able to, uh, in order to sort of get some of this right. So I think that that's part of what uh, is uh, I'm going off here, and and the other thing is that it seems to be that it must also be based on population of travelers, not just population of people, because otherwise Nigeria is sort of 200 
million population country, so surely they would be massive, but they're not because they don't travel and it's not a, not a part of Nigerian life as much as it would be if somewhere like, say, America or China. Or... So I think that Jakarta, Beijing, Guangzhou, New Delhi, Paris, Cape Town, Brasilia, Washington, it sort of gives you a really good spread of the map and then it is just Nigeria is, is the place probably in the middle of the map that it, I would say is most central and is the would surely be the most significant city. Um, I could definitely be wrong about that, but it's it's I'm going purely on population of, of African country there. So um, that's where I'll leave this video for now. Um, I guess let me know if you want me to keep going on this um, on this particular runner series, if you want to see more of the free mode or just me sort of playing it just so, I mean, I can obviously continue on with this. Um, because I don't think, I think that what this is really lacking is that fun challenge that the other one had. But, but like I said, the point of this is almost to try and get an understanding of how you should route your map. What, what can I learn here that I can then apply to all countries mode uh, when they do update it and I, uh, I go for another run on that. Uh, but until then, uh, thanks for watching. And yeah, I might make another one of these. We'll, uh, we'll see how we go. Catch you later. See ya.